I've been hired to test out a self-driving car. Definitely not what I expected. I woke up yet again in my empty house, ready to kick off another menial day. Had some breakfast, some toast and OJ. Looked at my phone. Seriously, it's so quiet in my house, so naturally I could hear the delicate purr of Ted pulling into the driveway. Yep, I named the car Ted. Fully autonomous and electric, Ted's saving the world in two ways. Basically, the company issued several of these to residents of a couple of towns in Rhode Island. I don't know if you've heard about the self-driving shuttle that's being released. Who would have thought tiny Rhode Island would lead the country in self-driving vehicles? We're on the verge of saving hundreds of thousands of lives a year, the company always says. All us testers have to do is monitor and use the car. So I walked out to my driveway, and the car's left door opened for me. I climbed into the passenger seat and buckled in. Though there is no driver's seat, of course, everyone sits in the back in a self-driving car. The whole car lit up, cool blue lights came on, windows rolled down halfway, AC circulated, and a little screen for GPS in the front came on. I was impressed the first dozen times, but I just sighed. I fucking hate my job. Watch your language, Ted said in his peppy robot voice. I laughed. Stop saying that, Ted. I'm going to be swearing a lot in here, I said. The reserved little engine purred again, and we were off. After a long, hard day, Ted was driving me home that night. We were going through the woods. I just sat and looked out the window, dozing off. Ted, put on my Beatles playlist, I said. You got it. That woke me up. I was just jamming, tapping my feet. I looked out the front window. I could barely make anything out. Admittedly, I never would have seen her had I been driving. This woman came out of nowhere, stumbling onto the road. Ted! I yelled as we crashed right into her. She tumbled onto the hood and then fell off onto the street. Malfunction, Ted said. Ted just kept on going at the same speed, blasting, cause I'm the tax man. Ted, stop, pull over, I said. Ted pulled over and slowly came to a stop. The engine purr faded into silence. The left door flung open and I got out and ran back to where we had hit her. I found the woman just off the road in the dirt. She was wearing a red dress. I squinted, then found her neck to check her pulse. Just then, she squirmed. Fuck, what happened? She said, slurring. I said nothing. I walked her back to Ted, who was still parked obediently at the side of the road. I tried helping her climb into the car, but she pushed me away. We both got in and buckled our seatbelts. I looked over to the woman. She was holding her forehead in pain. Ted, follow the ER route, I said. The car got going. You just hit me with your fucking car, she said. What were you doing in the middle of nowhere at night? I shot back. Not important. Hey, turn off that music. Jesus. Ted? The Beatles shut off instantly. Everything was so quiet you could hear the crickets outside. I looked back at the woman. So, what's your name? Barbara. Is this your self-driving car? In a sense, I'm a beta tester. The car is company property. Well, I guess it's not your fault. I'm gonna get a ton of liability money from the company, though. I assume you're taking me to the hospital, right? Huh? Yeah, of course. Good, Barbara said, and we sat in silence. I'm gonna get so much fucking liability, she mumbled. Watch your language, Ted said. Ted, I told you to stop saying that. The woman pulled out her phone. What are you doing? I said. Calling a friend. She held the phone up to her ear as it rang. Shit, no service. I felt a pulling sensation on my chest. My seatbelt, it started tightening. Just as Barbara dialed again, we swerved harshly and crashed into a tree. 
Barbara fell forward and her head banged against the front glove compartment. No front seats and self-driving. Her phone fell out of her hand, onto the floor. I was jerked forward, but my seatbelt kept me in. Front bumper damaged. 70% intact, Ted said. These new cars were tough, I'll admit. I heard the trunk pop open, followed by both side doors. There's litter inside me. Foreign object inside me. Please put the garbage in the trunk, Ted said. I lingered. I was still getting my bearings. Please put the garbage in the trunk, Ted repeated. I did what I was told. I have to admit, dragging a body out of a car was stressful as hell. I kept looking behind me to check if anyone was there. I slowly dragged Barbara out onto the ground, lifted her on my shoulder, and threw her in the trunk, which shut automatically for me. I collapsed back into the car, panting. Tons of Febreze was sprayed out of the AC. There was still tons of blood staining the right seat, though. I just sat back, still catching my breath, as Ted said, Garbage protocol, and started driving. We arrived at a vacant parking lot. By now, it must have been about 1 a.m. I squinted out the front window. I saw three other cars moving about in the lot. I could barely make them out. They must have been electric because I couldn't hear any engines. Ted pulled us in about halfway up the parking lot to the left. There was one of a few giant dumpsters that was open. Ted made a meticulous U-turn and slowly backed up to the dumpster. The trunk popped open. I asked Ted if he wanted me to do anything. No response. I heard a couple of loud thuds, and then the trunk shut itself. Then Ted pulled into a nearby spot to park. Just as he did, my phone rang. It was from my boss. Hello? Hey man, my boss answered. So, how many today? One. Just one malfunction? That's great. Good work today. We're getting close. Yeah. No problem, I guess. Remember, this is going to save hundreds of thousands of lives in the long run, my boss said, and he hung up. See? I told you guys. I fucking hate my job.